Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. We are back at Chickasaw National Recreation Area here at the National Park in my hometown of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Just back behind me is the herd that Cole and I was a part of, the historic movement of the bison from their old pasture where this herd started in 1934, I believe, and was finally moved out of that pasture into this pasture right here behind us. They're hanging out up here around the new corral system they're uh, gone a little bit further away from us but cole's got the long lens to pick it up so you guys can see them a little more up close than us right now but what a great time that we had and a very fortunate and lucky to be able to do that and bring you guys along on that as well so we just came to do a herd check on them and see how they were doing of course we can't go in the pasture with some cues we would love to do that but can't do that and uh anyways we've been driving by and seeing how they were doing making sure they're all good. And I know Steve and those guys, the park is watching them and keeping an eye on everything. So what I wanted to do is besides coming to check on them, we've been working at the Ponderosa and at the Lynch property at mom and Kevin's getting ready for our spring roundup, which I can't wait to bring to you. It's gonna be exciting. So we have been catching bison and working on that. That's the big step you gotta catch them before you work them. And if you guys have never seen our working videos, stay tuned for that. It's always can be an interesting show. Now we kind of did a little relocation here and uh, found the herd. They moved away from us. The big guys came down here in the corner and checking things out. So there's two things great about this property. One, this highway right here is the one that we take to get to the Dunbar place, which is mom and Kevin's place. So every time we drive by, I'm always looking at the old pasture but now they're in the new pasture where they're way more visible. You can see them like this. And so the other neat thing about this specific 42 acre property, this process started many, many years ago when I just graduated high school and I started working here at the park in 2004, my first summer, I was able to get my wildland firefighter certification. And so what they started doing actually with this property, with this portion right here, is they started cleaning up all of the cedar brush and all that and started removing the cedar because it was covered in cedar. And then what happened is I was able to be on the very first burn on this to clean this whole pasture up. And so that was really the first process of that. And that's kind of where it all began and how, how it started. And then once the superintendent, Bill Wright, got in there and started really kicking it off in 2016, 2017, when he got the paperwork side of it and started to push to get these guys over here. So you're talking, you know, almost 20 years of, of time and then a year and a half to build this fence. But here's the whole story about this unique 42 acres. This used to be part of the city of Sulphur and it was actually a golf course. And here's the fun part. I learned this when I, where we burn it because you could see the old bunkers on this. A specific pasture in this property and I had no idea that this was actually a golf course at one time I think a nine-hole golf course or something like that I'm sure the park historians could probably key in and tell you some more interesting facts about it but an old golf course then part of the park covered in cedar trees cedar trees removed burned and then fence built bison over here in an old golf course part of the old city of sulfur pretty interesting story and now I get to drive by it and see these bison here on the way to see Dunbar and those bison over there. So pretty cool story. That brings me to my next part. Lots of fun stories of being in that pasture and being with those bison and that old crooked horn bull. I got to give all the thanks to a guy, my old boss, one of the best bosses I've ever had, Steve Burrow. Uh, Steve is back to work at this park, obviously, and I talked about him in our last video of us in when we released the bison, we were part of that. I was able to interview Steve and ask him some questions and just good old chat with Steve like we normally do. And um, we got it all right here for you guys. Take a look. <laughs> guys, this is Steve Burrow. Steve's the best boss I've ever had. I just want to say that first of all. And uh, so <laughs> there's a lot of stories behind why that is. But anyways, uh, Steve gave me the opportunity when I graduated high school in 2004. Steve was here at the park as a chief of resource management and 
he hired two hooligans that summer. He hired myself <laughs> and my brother-in-law, Daniel, from Arms Family Homestead. And we had no idea, really, kind of everything that we were going to get involved with. But luckily, we were able to. And Steve became our boss. And one of the coolest things that, to me, was so important to me is the first thing he said that we're in charge of was to take care of the bison. Well, let's start before. <laughs> Dusty Baker was one of the best <laughs> employees I ever had. As a matter of fact, comma, he liked the bison so much, he even let them wear his uniform Oh, sometime. no, we don't talk about that story. <laughs> You'll have to find that picture, Dad. Oh, yeah. I know. We won't talk about some stories that happened in this pasture. Yeah. But maybe, maybe another day. Now, Dust, Dusty was, the, as far as all the employees I had for summer, course I had you back how many I was here summers? like three or four summers I yeah. think yeah yeah I can remember you telling me it might have been after the first summer you said you know what I want to do I want to get some land and raise buffaloes and I'm thinking what <laughs> you know I'm not making this hard enough for you <laughs> you <laughs> want to do that good. forever and darn if you didn't show up and all of a sudden you're raising buffaloes and I love to see people succeed at stuff like that so I appreciate the comment, and I'm glad I, you know, you never know. You yeah. you might stick someone out there painting a, a barn, and all of a sudden they're, you know, Picasso or something. Yeah. Well, Steve trusted Daniel and I enough to drive a government vehicle out here, and like like I do now, as we bring them cubes, we, had, we checked their water and stuff, and just our experiences of coming out here, it was kind of a neat thing here. There, we had a bull here at the time, and his name was Crooked Horn. It was, he was just famous, he had a famous bull and whatnot. And I think there was probably ten or eleven. It was about ten or eleven of them, right? Yeah, so, probably about the dozens. same. We try to keep them around that number. Yeah. But. but I just always remember pulling out here, and <laughs> he was one of the first ones that came up. And it's, of course, he'd stick his oh, nose yeah. into the vehicle with you, and we're giving uh -huh. cubes and. You know, for me, from I'm in the driver's seat and Daniel's over here, and he just comes up to one. I think that I've got a picture of it, and he just sticks his nose in there, and I was just captivated and hooked right then and there. And so I was like, "This is going to be the best job ever. This is this is going to be the funnest thing for me." And of course, we didn't get to hang out in the pasture with him all the time, but it was definitely a highlight of of coming to work. And and Steve was really great about letting us be involved with them and spending time with them and then on this whole deal steve and i kept up for a long time and steve retired from this park and then came back here recently and so we've we've been friends for a long time but because steve came back and with some other friendships and relationships of people in the park Steve was able to let us come in and be a part of this big event um, and move in these bison that's been in this pasture since 1934. There, of course, there have been buffalo on this park since 1920, and the wow. first two they brought were in a horse-drawn wagon, two two wagons. You know that tells you how far. That's of course, incredible. back then there probably wasn't 500 head of buffalo there many. around. So it's it's has become a cultural resource you know like when i was four years old or so say back in the 60s i'll just say that we'd drive down to where, where my grandparents were but this was about halfway and we had to stop every time and see if we see the see buffalo them. so it's been good for this park and this community yeah. for sure definitely one of the oldest herds in the department of interior herds it is probably it is and recently they started this bison conservation study i say recently probably 2017 and they've checked 20 department of interior herds which would be fish and wildlife and yep. everywhere else and out of all the herds they checked they had the most heterozygosity or in other words the more pure bison in them even though they're not pure you know right, right you know yep. you're not yep. ever going to find one this herd does it do they originally start from the wichita mountains wichita mountains almost everyone that's been brought in has come from there uh, fish and wildlife service as you know 
of course, before 1950, we don't have real good records, so yeah. they could have come from somewhere else. Right. But you know, they put their herd together in 1906, and they gathered it from the Bronx Zoo, and I think Charles Goodnight had yep. some and all this. But at that time, if it looked like a bison, and you had a bison, you'd put them together. You yeah, know? they might have been <laughs> half bovine. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Anyway. Right. One of the things that... <laughs> Didn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, when I was here, we had to go pick up a young oh, bull. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we... You took me to... That was my first time to go to the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, where, like, we just talked about this herd originated from. We went to and Lawton and picked up a... It was like a, a young bull, I don't remember, but... Yeah, and I can't remember if we had cows with them or not. But I know we had that one bull. Yes. And they had it set aside for us. Yeah. And I think we called it Captain, but it was yeah. about two years old or something. I think it has expired since yes. since then. <laughs> yeah. But I remember a mistake that we made on that trip was saying, oh, well, we can stop and eat lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we the, should, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that poor bull was in the trailer yeah. that whole Hanging time. out. Yeah. All by himself. But, uh, also, I can remember we're hauling that thing back in a bumper pull trailer and it's all over the place. All over. And I just looked in the rear view mirror and the whole front of the trailer just <laughs> went like that. And he was just, he was yeah, like, he's in the front of it. So yeah. anyway, it was good to get it back here. That was a good thing about about you and, and Boone. You would work hard. I mean, a lot of times you can tell people to do something and then it's like they don't do it. Right. But, as long as you knew what you were supposed to do, you'd do it. Even, I won't talk about the calls I'd get. About, <laughs> hey, there's two rangers back here without their shirt on, getting a tan, and riding a four-wheeler by us, and they just wave, you know. Okay. <laughs> Put your shirt on. <laughs> it didn't melt in the seat when I had you guys spray that field. Oh, up. yeah. Oh, man. Lots of, yeah. lots of good stuff. A lot of fun. We had a lot of fun yeah. in those days. And fortunately, you got out of college alive and yeah. everything. and I made it. So I was glad when you came back to this area, I was glad to see it. So. Well, it's fun. And the bison keep us all connected and bring us back to stuff like this. Well, I don't know if you pay much attention, but the Secretary of Interior, Deb Holland, has designed a funding and a program to really increased bison herds all over the country. Yes. The future looks bright for bison herds. I'd love to see free range bison again, yeah. but unfortunately I don't think we can do that because they'd be eating people's flowers <laughs> yeah. out of their front. Hanging out in their yard. But, yeah, but I've always loved them, just like you, but I just didn't want to build that much fence. So yeah, I, I like We're still building fence. Yeah. We've still got fence to build. Yeah. That's an ongoing deal, but uh, here in the park has actually put some put some money into the bison by facilities like this handling systems and you guys know how much time we've put into our handling system and design and all that but you have to have all this and like Steve wouldn't have been able to catch nine out of the ten without facilities like this and starting a routine basis with them catching my cubes and stuff right. so you definitely have to have good good stuff for bison well and the point I, I made in an earlier interview with NPR and everyone I talked to basically about bison. When they, when they asked me, should I get some bison? I've got 40 acres out here or whatever. <laughs> well, I just tell them, here's the one thing you've got to remember. People will say bison are like just like cows. Well, they're not they're quite not. Yeah. like cows because when you get them up in a tight area, that's uh, when you see the wild come yes, back out. Yes, so, the blood starts running. Yeah, I just always tell people just don't get too too comfortable. Yeah, you probably think the same. Yeah, I was thinking about Crooked Horn. He had passed away after I had left mm -hmm. and was doing the college thing and whatnot. When, do you remember what year he died? I want to say, well, actually, I've got it written down in my bison management plan, but I think it was about 2006 yeah. or five. So it's probably right after. And, well, you might have been here, but it was in the winter, in the fall, late right. fall, but and you, we decided to preserve him. Yeah. You know, so well, luckily it was cold, 
and his mm -hmm. you'd found him pr relatively yeah we were trying to doctor him while he was yeah going down. downgraded but he he didn't have any teeth left yeah. and, you know and it's just a part of the natural thing but he was such a famous bull yeah. we thought well it's worth and he's that. he's still on the park yeah, he is you know? still on the park that's yeah. right how old was he how I want to say he was about 26. Was he really? Wow. Because he was here before I got here, and I was trying to find out when they brought him, and I just found a bull that they had brought. And so I can't remember what year, but I remember it was about 25 or 26 years Jeez, old. Jeez, I didn't realize he was that old. I was thinking 18 for some reason. Well, he probably, most free range bulls probably only live 18 True. to 20 because. Yeah. But since he was in a domestic environment, yep. he probably lasted longer. But a little bit longer. He he certainly earned his right to be in, yeah. <laughs> on display Did. still. And anybody so. can go same. He's at the nature center, at the Travertine Nature Center here in the park. Anyways, thank you for uh, putting up with me in the summers of working here and <laughs> me work here and then let me come back and me and Cole be well, a part of this. I mean, you're the perfect person to be involved in this and I. I wanted to have you even more involved getting your hands dirty, but we got all these people. Yeah. That, I wanted everyone in the park, especially, to have a part in yes. whatever we're doing. But I still enjoy going out and feeding them. You know, That's I don't right. care what my pay grade is. Yep. Just like, yep. <laughs> Definitely a highlight of the job. Yeah, it uh, keeps me away from a computer. Yes. So. Well, and just park policy and everything. There's just there's rules you have to go by, and I was just lucky for Cole and I to come and kind of get a little behind the scenes look at things and it's pretty cool because now that they're out of this pasture they're going to restore we'll clean uh, up this pasture try to clean this one up we still have to get another archaeological survey yep. Uh, yep. because the city of Sulphur yep. part of it set over there when, once we get that done, we're going to start taking out a lot of the woody vegetation that I've looked at some aerial photos from the 40s and it was just a okay. prairie yeah, yeah <laughs> So we'll get rid of a lot of that and then probably we no-till drill or yep. something like that with some, get some native. native seed. The lowest impact possible. We can't go through and plow it because right. this countryside is nothing but rock and yeah. if you plow it, it's going to be even worse. But it hopefully will be in a lot better shape to hold them longer and even though that's supposedly a temporary enclosure over there i i think we'll probably get used to rotating them and seeing how much better it is so definitely we know that they need grass and the new pasture that they're in is definitely going to provide that for a while and then it's exciting because they can rotate them back and forth and taking yeah. care of the bison and give them what they best thing for them well it's good we're all i'll just say this uh we're all proud of you the ones of us that have known you for a while Thank you know, I remember your video when you first got a few of them. I don't yeah. want to talk about those videos. <laughs> no, I thought, I thought, well, he finally did it. And then, you know, now it's like, yeah. you've really made it work. Well, we try to. We both care and love about these animals. And, you know, people ask me, why do you do this? And that's a long time ago when I started the YouTube thing. I looked on there and you couldn't find hardly anything about them. Uh -huh. And, I mean, we're talking about our America's mammal. It's exactly. our state mammal. And there's nothing a whole lot out there about this animal that wants roamed for forever and ever then almost disappearing from us right forever it's unbelievable and we I, I have the opportunity to get to raise them and steve gets to be here with them so you take that animal that almost disappeared and we get to promote it and try to bring back the culture and mm -hmm. the spirit of the american bison and if you're like me you bring some bison home every day on the bottom of your shoes yeah, that's right, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, all right, anyway. well, all right. thank you steve